Good afternoon. I'm going to try demonstrating uh, how to make a charger bowl. Yeah, this is again the porcelain, Conten porcelain that's been sitting in the studio a little too long. Even though it's in a plastic bag, they dry out a little. But because it's harder to deal with, harder to move, it's also less likely to flop over when you try and do something outrageous with it, which is what a charger bowl is. So whatever the pot you're making, this initial puck is generally the width of your foot ring of your final piece. Uh, sometimes you can bring the pot in a little but you don't want to try to bring the pot out further. Okay, so I'm doing the bottom here. And of course the temptation is to go straight across, but that's if you wanted a flat bottomed object, like a jar or something like that. Since it's a bowl, the bottom needs to rise a little. And in some of the charger bowls in the museums, that center is, is actually close to a perfect hemisphere. Okay, so I've got a lot of clay up here, but I'm going to need it to make this broad, flat, charger bowl rim. So what I started with is one sixth of a bag of clay, of a 25 pound bag of clay. And that tends to be the system I use in my shop. You know, the, the bags are coming 25 pounds. And I just think in terms of how many balls of clay I'll get out of every bag. Now, with a shape like this, you sort of sneak up on it. You don't try to get too much done all at once because you've got to create a situation in which that which is below can support the weight and the activity of that which is above. So the rim is still pretty thick, but it's got to be because as it gets wider, more space, the same amount of clay is going to go over more space. It's going to thin out. And if the rim was thin now, I'd have no hope.
And I do a lot of compressing with the rib, but that also is part of what I'm doing to get a nice, smooth, continuous curve. I suspect I can get more height. So I've talked about how my average pot is about five minutes, but of course, larger pots are going to take a little longer because there's just more surface to create and shape. And the proportions on these are always tricky. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna do a little cleaning up of the rim while it's strong. When it's way out, dangling around, just barely holding up, you don't want to be messing with it. Okay, when it dries, this rim is going to pop back up a bit, um, which can be sort of disappointing when you're th when you've just thrown what you think is a low, wide rim. But then later in the glaze firing, it tends to drop back down a little. And if you fuss too much with it, it's more likely to flop and collapse completely. Okay, we're almost there. And odds are, when you're learning how to do this shape, you're going to crash a few. But that's okay. Just wedge up the clay and make something else. There we go. Thank you.